Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. This week, in the lead up to Halloween, I have a really cool effect to show you. It involves color correction, masking effects, and a bad TV effect. I'm calling it the Haunted TV. Before we get started, I want to show you the final effect. I used only two clips, a stock photo from Shutterstock.com and a video from a Canon 5D. I'll open the project that already contains the stock photo I'm going to use for the scene. It's a 5K photo and I added a few transform effects to place more emphasis on the TV. However, the shot is still too bright and cheery and I want to give it more of a creepy vibe. For that, I'll press Command 6 to open the color effects pane and add a hue saturation curve corrector. I want to darken the scene, but only certain elements. I'll select the hue versus luma eyedropper and sample some of the yellow in the wallpaper. Using the control point, I'll drag downward. With this particular control, you select a hue, then adjust the amount of brightness of that hue. As I move the control point up and down, only the wall and floor are being darkened, while the other elements in the shot are unaffected. I want the room fairly dark, so I'll set it here. Next, I want to deal with the saturation in the image. There's just too much color for my taste. So I'll select the hue versus sat eyedropper and select the wallpaper just above the TV. With this control, you select a hue, then use the control point to change the saturation of the selected hue. In this case, I want to pull down on the control point to desaturate the wallpaper and the floor, because both these elements have similar color makeup. With those two selective adjustments out of the way, I want to darken the window side of the room without affecting the exposure of the TV. This time, I'll add a color board corrector, click the Mask Shape button to add a shape mask, use the control points in the viewer to shape the mask into a square, then enlarge it so that it covers the right side of the room. Then make sure there's a fair amount of feathering to hide the transition from dark to light. In the color board, I'll reduce the mid-tone exposure to minus 60%. The next area I want to deal with is the window. I want it to emit an eerie green cast in the room, so I'll add another color board corrector, add a shape mask, then shape it and move it over the window. I want the feather amount to be fairly large so that the light appears to fall off as it gets further into the room. In the color board, I'll move the highlights puck into the green and make sure it's more saturated than the other green tones in the room. The shot is looking pretty good, but there's still too much warmth in the floorboards. I'll take care of that by jumping back into the hue saturation curves, selecting the hue versus hue eyedropper and sampling the floor. Using the control point, I'll pull out some of the orange, but not too much. I want the floor to retain some of the reddish wood tones. Let's jump back into the video inspector to see a before and after. That's a pretty dramatic change. And one of the reasons color correction is one of the most satisfying aspects of visual storytelling. What I've done here is basically relit the scene. Next, we'll turn our attention to the girl who will appear on the TV. This will be fun. I'll select the clip in the timeline and press X to mark a range. Then locate the clip in the browser. The portion of the clip I want to use has already been favorited, so I'll select the green bar to create a range and press Q to perform a three-point connect edit in the timeline. In order to focus on just the girl clip as I'm working, I'll disable the background clip by selecting it and pressing V. Next, I need to separate her from the background, so I'll add a draw mask, then add control points around her to create the mask, and close the mask. I'll then take a few moments to finesse the mask shape. She moves very little in the shot, so I'll just need to adjust it so that it's close and reduce the feathering amount. Once I add the effects, the mask imperfections will be hidden. In the effects browser, I'll locate the cast effect, drop it on the clip, then change the color to a ghastly green tone. Next, I'll locate the bad TV effect and drop it on the clip. As I play it back, I'll increase the amount of the effect and increase the static type to blue noise. That looks great. I'll then re-enable the background clip, enable transforms, then scale and move her over the TV.
I'll need to do a perspective fake by selecting the Distort tool, then adjusting the control points to create the illusion we're looking at the image at the correct angle. It's also a good idea to change the blend mode so that she blends more naturally into the TV screen. I'll choose Linear Dodge from the Blend Mode pop-up. I'll then halt playback because I need to make one more adjustment. I want her to slowly appear on the TV, then slowly fade off. Move the playhead to the start of the clip and set a keyframe for fill opacity for the draw mask and drag the value to zero. I'll move the playhead to the middle of the clip and set the value to 100. Then move the playhead to the end of the clip and set the value back to zero. Let's play that back. Now all it needs is some creepy kid laughter. If you like that effect, there's more where that came from. This week we're running a 40% off special on our Warp Speed Effects in Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Check out the link below and the code, and I'll see you next week on Matt Briggs Studio.